Hello. On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrian Gomez, and I am pleased to be your moderator today from San Jose, Costa Rica. In today's program, we have the pleasure to welcome two young athletes and new certified coaches from our continent. I'm talking about Mr. Rodolfo Ramirez from Guatemala and Ms. Jamie Subandi from the United States, who are going to join us to talk about BWF Fast Track Course Experience. But before leaving you with our guests, I would like to read a short summary about them. In the case of Rodolfo, he was the badminton Pan American champion in men doubles in 2009. He was also a medalist in the Central American and Caribbean Games and medalist in the badminton Pan American Championships. He's currently working with the badminton national team from Guatemala. On the other hand, Jimmy uh, was an Olympic athlete from the United States in Rio 2016. She was also a gold medalist in mixed doubles and a bronze medalist in women's singles in the Pan American Games Toronto 2015. Also, she has eight national titles from the United States and she has been a member from the national US team 11 times. Good afternoon, Rodolfo and Jamie. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your homes in Guatemala City and in California. Please share your screen. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Bami Tempanam for inviting me. I think that it's very important for people who are in the process of finishing their athlete's career uh, who would like to continue their career as coaches to know a little bit about what our experience was like in the uh, fast track course that we had uh, in Mexico approximately a month ago. Just to give you some context, what does this fast track course mean for coaches? Well, this is a program that was developed by the Badminton World Federation, which combines the education content from both coach level one and two. Usually the BWF uh, teaches these courses uh, separately. But this introduces level one, which mainly basic, which basically talks about the tactical, physical, and technical aspects of the coaching uh, process. It also talks about the methodology, the basic elements, which is the most important thing uh, to really know the basics of uh, coaching. But it also teaches you the progressive sessions that are part of, uh, of coaching. We, as athletes, were able to uh, realize that it was not just about going to the, the training session and that just coach, no. You need to uh, plan for beginners, but also for advanced athletes. Now my knowledge is a lot deeper in terms of the coaching uh, process. Level two talks about the physical and technical, tactical and psycho psychological aspects, but it also defines the different elements of the methodology. And it also, which is the most complex, I think, the most, the most complex for us, I think it was to actually develop the annual plan. I think that it does take a long time and it's a completely different world from badminton in general. So this was the first uh, fast track course held in Latin America. It was organized by Badminton Panam. And we were lucky enough to have the participation of Olympic athletes uh, active uh, players as well as former players. I would like to tell you a little bit about my beginnings. Well, I started, I'm currently 33 years old. I played for more than 22 years until the year 2019. I started 
playing badminton when I was really uh, young. I pretty much lived my whole life playing badminton. And I started playing this because of my dad who brought, who took me to a championship. I started liking it. I got involved in the training sessions little by little. I started in this uh, badminton world from the very beginning. And until nowadays, I don't consider myself an extremely talented person for sports. However, I was lucky enough that in my house, they always uh, taught me to work hard, to be patient and to persevere. Because I knew that little by little, I was going to achieve my goals. I was going to have my chance and that actually happened. I think that throughout the years, uh, several opportunities came by and now they are they still coming handy to me. I think I was able to learn the methodology and the philosophy of several uh, countries in terms of training. I lived for three years in Spain. I played uh, the Spanish league. Uh, I had to understand the way they uh, train in Denmark. I, I also worked together with uh, the um, Thai uh, national teams, which is a, a they are world powers. So I know those were great experiences, and I still value their methodologies, especially when doing this transition from uh, athlete to coach. Because many times we keep specific ways of training, especially when. Uh, dealing with other human beings. I think that's fundamental. The mark that um, coaches leave in their athletes. So the fast track course is well, lasted a week. I think it was a very intense course. It was very demanding. I think that from the very beginning, we knew how complicated it was going to be in terms of information. And we, were, we knew that we were going to receive a lot of information in a very short period of time with very long sessions. And we had to be very focused because we knew that not just because we were athletes, we knew everything. We, actually, at the end of the day, I think it was very tiring. We learned a lot. All of us from the very first day uh, started with our athlete chip in, in mind. But uh, as days went by, it was incredible how that chip changed in everyone's mind. We had to change it for we needed to change our, our mindset from an athlete to a coach one. I, I think we it was good because we had the help from the people who uh, gave this course. They had patience with us. They helped us. And I think that also the uh, group co cooperated a lot because we were very receptive. Uh, when listening to the advice that was given to us to accept them and be empathic in order to know that this was a new world to us. It was very important in my personal opinion the um, everything that was given to us because I think that without the uh, proper environment, this would have been more difficult in terms of logistics and human talent. Everything was really important uh, in this course. I think that the week uh, ended uh, really quickly because of how demanding it was, but also because of how complex the course was. At a personal level, what motivated me to take this course? Well, I think that from the moment I transitioned from 
athlete to coach. I was always aware of the fact that I had to become a professional and learn from people who were around me, who were near me. And I think that this opportunity given by uh, Badminton Panam uh, with this course was very important because we learned many things which we knew, but we didn't have some guideline or parameter or we didn't know what tools we should use first in order to follow the right pattern. So we had the idea that there's only high performance and we had completely forgotten about the fact that there are also different education uh, stages and these are extremely important when we uh, coach athletes. So this was very important to us to see how they changed those patterns in us, how uh, training is not the same at a specific uh, stage versus, for example, at a professional level. Those are things that we learned uh, a lot. And I think that all of us uh, learned uh, great lessons. I think that another thing that motivated me a lot in order to take this course was how important cert these certifications are worldwide. I had had other experiences in the past when hiring when they when people try to hire coaches they ask for these certifications anywhere in the world. So I think that if you have the chance to receive or to take this uh fast track you should take it because this helped us to get this recognition, this certification, so we can be efficiently recognized that we have um, learned the appropriate knowledge from the BWF, which is very important. I think that another important factor, which was uh, very motivational, was the level of knowledge from all our uh, Colleagues, I think that this was a very important factor in the course. I think that all of us supported each other. And I think that, as Adrian mentioned in his introduction, there were Olympic athletes. There were uh, champions. There were people who were training in Europe. So I think that it was extremely important for athletes uh, from that level cooperated and also uh, went through the course because that made uh, the level a lot higher. So you cannot just relax during the course because you know that you have to keep up with that level. You know that you have to keep up with those people in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience, in terms of the way they see badminton. So that was very motivating and you should take that into account why uh, we're considering to take this course. The most um, important challenges that I saw in this course throughout the week uh, in Mexico were well, the main one. And I think that Everyone had a lot of problems in the beginning was doing in, in doing this transition from athlete to coach. I think that as uh, coach level one Emmanuel says, in the sessions we had we, we thought like, Athletes, like you, there's just one way to train. Whether talking about uh, physical or technical aspects, to us, there was just one way to do things, and that was the way, and that's it. So, I think that the advice 
that we were given by the tutors who were given the course, I think it was really important to see what was the first step. We could not just skip to the third step. No, we had to uh, take step by step until we knew how far we could reach in a complex training session like the ones we do or used to do as professional athletes. We knew we were already in the most difficult training exercises, but when you're learning, obviously in that stage it's completely different. So that transition that they helped us go through was one of the challenges that was the hardest uh, according to me and I think according to all of us because we changed our minds little by little we had to I think that this uh, this stage is really important we had to work hard when teaching uh, children we had groups of uh, people who were just uh, starting to play badminton and we had to realize we had to consider every single detail it was not just about going to the court and coach no we had to pay attention to the way we spoke to the way we threw the shuttles uh, where should we stand when we talk to them? Uh, we should give a variety of um, coaching styles because not every kid learns the, the same way. So it was a very important challenge because it was the very first time that we were, talk were working with a young athletes. And the last item was uh, an important one to me, to deconstruct the preconceived ideas as athletes because we had to start from the basics and to gather all of our ideas up and then have or create a, a, train, a coaching session. So that was a very important challenge. To take those ideas that we had, to deconstruct them, to put all the pieces back together and to create new ideas. Now... Uh, we we had lost all of this because we were already high performance athletes, so we already had a, a specific or established. We already had a set uh, training pattern. How is this helping me currently? Well, I'm currently working with the uh, national badminton team in Guatemala, and I'm helping. Uh, with those kids who are still learning. So this has helped me a lot, as I mentioned in the previous slide. It has helped me to deconstruct the ideas, to transmit this these to the children so they can grab those ideas, the ideas that I think that are appropriate with progressive sessions, who they taught us, uh, which they, the tutors taught us in the course. I, I think this is a very long process. I know it's a long process. It's not going to come overnight, but I think that it, w when we uh, see how these children improve every day is one of the biggest satisfactions, at least to me. Uh, this is all thanks to the fast track course that we took. Another important aspect that is helping me a lot is to understand and analyze the plans. It's a completely different world to actually know everything that goes uh, uh, throughout that happens throughout the year. I think that was really important. It was really hard for us as well to do the annual plan. I think that it includes a lot of different aspects and details that we need to take into account. So. We see these now in a different way, and to us, uh, now this is more familiar. It's not like we are seeing something uh, from the very first time, something that we don't understand anything at all. So, 
how is this helping me? What I learned from the course is has helped me because uh, back then I only considered the uh, physical and technical aspects. I didn't work much at a tactical level or at a psychological level, but the sport became more modern, the sport grew, and we took in consideration other aspects. So I think that observing how athletes, whether young or older or professionals or new learners, we need to observe their emotions to know if they're having a good day or a bad day, to know uh, if they are feeling good, uh, if they wake, if we need to listen to them, to all athletes. Because that makes our sessions uh, be better, our plans uh, get better. So that's something that at a personal level is helping me quite a lot. What are my future plans? Well, I think that I want to keep learning because I like to have a beginner's mind to know that there's there are always there's always room for improvement we always can learn from everyone from all coaches from all ideas and that will keep making me that will keep helping me create my own philosophy and to grab a little bit from every coach so those are my future plans to take step to take step by step and learn from everyone a little bit more and i think that another plan that i have is to continue taking advantage of the different opportunities that come my way just as just like this course uh just as this course helped me to learn a lot i think that Everyone who's interested in uh, going through the pathway of a coach, Badminton Panam has a lot of uh, opportunities to help you grow courses and training sessions. So you should take adv- advantage of those opportunities and continue learning. And the, the, the sport is changing very fast so we need to grow with it and take advantage of all of these opportunities finally i would like to motivate you to encourage you to take this course if you're planning to take this faster course whether here in america or maybe if you find this opportunity in some other confederation do it because you'll learn a lot. As I mentioned before, these uh, certifications are really useful. I think that all federations really value these type of titles because uh, these are um, well considered worldwide. So I encourage you to, to take advantage of these opportunities, to be aware of all of these opportunities. I think that they are very valuable. We'll learn a lot. You learn a lot. You will learn a lot in these opportunities, and also from all the different tutors. I was lucky enough that, besides, I mean, we have Chema at home. At home, I mean, I have. I'm lucky enough because he is a tutor, and I think he has uh, invaluable an. In, invaluable amount of knowledge and we have them right there at home with us so we are lucky in that sense i think that everyone here in america all tutors here in america have the same ability so you should know that we can make our sport grow make it more visible so little by little the people who are athletes or who are going through that transition from athletes to coaches, we should uh, take that opportunity to make this sport grow. I think it's a nice opportunity to keep enjoying uh, doing what we love doing with passion, to make people, or actually kids, if they're still in the learning process, to make them grow with values uh, as good people who 
enjoy this sport, who do it well, who enjoy it. That's the most important thing. And as I mentioned before, to have that beginner's mind anywhere and everywhere and with everything we do, there's always someone who can teach us something new, how to do things, how to learn, and how to be better every day, whether in badminton or in whatever we do or in life in general. So that was more or less my presentation of my experience as a former athlete and now in this transition uh, becoming a coach. That was my opinion and everything I went through in this week during the fast track course in Mexico. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll leave you now with Adrian as moderator. Thank you very much, Rodolfo. Please, Jamie, continue with such an interesting talk. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jamie Subandi from USA, and I attended the BWF Coach Certification Level 1 and 2 Fast Track course back in January of this year in Mexico City. And I just first want to say thank you to Badminton Pan America Confederation and BWF uh, for their part in coordinating this course and providing this, uh, this resource to the Pan America region. So in this presentation, I'll be going over some of the benefits of this course, a few key points that I found especially valuable, and then I'll go into the application portion that I was able to do when I returned uh, back to the US. So to highlight a few key reasons uh, to join the course, one, it's a great opportunity to really learn from experienced coaches. And at this time, it's a transition from being an athlete to a coach, or even if someone is simultaneously coaching and competing at the same time, this can be a very valuable resource uh, for them, or if you're just planning to coach in the near future. So as an elite athlete, how we hit various shots or how we move on the court can really become second nature. However, when it comes to coaching and teaching others, we have to learn how and what to communicate uh, to various types of learners. And to various types of skill levels, whether it's beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And this fast track course was able to cover how to tailor those lessons based on the individual's needs and um, the fundamentals of what it means to be a coach and how to coach effectively, dependent on the athlete situation. Again, their skill level and what their goals are in terms of competition and where they where they want to be in the future. So since this was a combined course for BWF level one and level two, we, we went over the basic footwork and strokes throughout the course, but then we were able to discuss and apply the management of group coaching, how to do drills that are very strategic based and receive real time tutoring from the instructors and the tutors uh, that were made available to us. And we were a, a group of peers that we've either competed with or against, and we all kind of know each other. So that was very helpful to even have that feedback from our discussions with each other. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, there were experienced coaches that were available to us as instructors and guides one main instructor and three tutors and all of them were level two or above and they had several years of experience of coaching under their belts and they served as a great resource throughout the course we also had uh, peers that we um that were we were put into groups so that we could discuss um how to organize a group class and what we could do to emphasize um, a certain drills or strategies and how to incorporate strength and conditioning and what we would do in each uh, scenario. 
So we are also provided with um, BWF coaching manuals, level one and two, that are very detailed. In level one, there's the fundamentals on what it means to be a coach, because there are many roles that a coach plays, mentor, teacher, guide, uh, counselor, um, advisor, and so on. So it, we were able to touch base on that and really change the mindset of an athlete peer to becoming a coach. And it also covered a step-by-step -step instruction on how to perform, perform strokes and footwork to each corner. And again, as elite athletes, that's pretty intuitive to us. We've practiced it many times over the course of several years. So to be able to actually have to define each step and demonstrate it in a, in a slower manner so that we could really learn how to disseminate that information to others who might not know um, how to hit or how to move on the court. So we really had to break it down and to the to the very basics and be able to communicate that. So that was a big, uh, big portion of the level one part of the course. So in the level two, there was more advanced application where we could really apply tactical components and strategies dependent on the event and what the situation calls for. In addition to that, there's also the timeline of competition. So what is the focus of each practice and why? So at different phases in competition level, it's it was it really had us critically think on what we should do to that's best for the athlete in that moment in time. So dependent on when their competition is going to be and what their weaknesses are and how to create a situation where we tackle on that weakness in order to strengthen that. So of course, the support from Badminton Pan Am and BWF they, to provide the facility, because then we were able to come to a place consistently and have the course every day for, um, for the whole week. And we even had junior players from the local area that were able to come and, and be our sort of guinea pigs when we were applying our uh, coaching sessions. Okay, so there are many valuable lessons throughout the course, and I'm just going to focus on these points. So these first three points here are fairly intuitive. Just as an athlete, when we prepare for a competition, so must a coach also prepare for the athletes, right? So the more preparation there is, the more successful, the more effective uh, a coaching session is or practice session, training session, whatever you want to call it. So a few things to consider when preparing for a lesson is, one, what is the purpose of that session and how is it going to be executing? How many players are there? Um, what, what is the rotation like of how the drills so that it's equitable amongst all the players? So not one athlete is getting more attention than another one. Um, and what are their skill levels? Because sometimes in group lessons, you could have five different athletes and, they're, and they have various skill levels and how, you, how to accommodate that so that everyone has a fair um, training session that's suitable to their needs or you could have 10 players or 15. And even with that, and this goes into the second point of being adaptable. So for example, you have a plan for 15 players, but let's say a couple players call in sick or they just can't make it. Um, maybe they, they're, they weren't able to get a ride um, and maybe some athletes come and you didn't expect them to come. So we did go over how to adapt and be flexible whenever there are surprises that occurs. And um, for time management, this seems very, it might seem like something that doesn't need to be pointed out, but it is very important. For example, if you have a 45 minute session on a practice court at a tournament and the tournament starts tomorrow and you have six players, how are you gonna use that court time to 
prepare for the competition tomorrow. So you still need to rotate and you still need to make sure everyone gets what they need to be ready for the tournament. So for that, all those three first points, they work together. You're gonna prepare beforehand how to adapt and manage the time wisely so that that time on the court is not wasted. So if you have 45 minutes, the six players, you know, ideally maybe go beforehand to warm up so that right when your time starts, you can start the session. And there is also that time where you need to discuss with the athletes what the plan is for the lesson. So it would be better in that case to even discuss that before the session starts so that the court time is used, uh, used wisely. All right, and these next three bullet points I bolded because they were emphasized greatly throughout the course. And it's they also stood out to me too. It's very applicable and I think very important for people to consider when they're having a training session. And this can also apply to athletes too. For example, if they're traveling and many times we don't have a coach with us. So this would be something that even athletes can help um, regulate themselves when they're competing. So that first bolded one is incorporating tactical components in various situations. So there's different events that people can play, right? Singles, doubles, mix. So what is first the situation? Let's say you're playing single or you have athletes who are playing singles. And what do you want to work on? So do you want to work on creating open space on the court off in the beginning of the of the rally off the serve? So how is that going to be executed? So first, really discussing with the athletes, OK, this is what we're going to work on. Um, this might be a weakness that you see in one of the athletes or both of the athletes uh, for the singles drill. And you would discuss with them what is the situation, what do you want to execute, and how we're going to execute it. So there would be some controlled components of, okay, serve and then do this shot, and then you can choose to either do one or the other shot. So that's a tactical component. Um, another one is, let's say you're playing mixed doubles, and the two girls in the front are, or two female players are fighting for control over the net. So what shot placements can you do? That's both um, that's that's safe for the female player in the front, but also beneficial for the partner in the back, right? So discussing with them how to convert the net play into an offensive play for you and your partner. So I thought this was very interesting because it really forced everyone in the course to critically think about um, what what decision we're making or we're having the athlete make in certain types of situations. So another bolded bullet point there, creating annual plans. So when you're competing, you might have two competitions, you might have six, you might have 10. So depending on what, um, what the athlete wants, we, you would discuss with them what the annual plan is. And that doesn't have to start in January. It can start on any 12 month cycle because that's also how just the ranking works. You're working off that 12 month cycle. So being able to create an annual plan is very crucial so that everyone is on the same page on what to expect in each phase. And this last bullet point really applies to every day. Evaluate, plan, deliver, review. So we discussed on planning. Plan the session beforehand, we create an annual plan, plan the drill, um, what to do next, and then delivering it. And then after delivering it, after the session, reviewing what went well, um, what can be improved upon, what did the athlete think? You know, it is important to check in with the athlete. Hey, this is what the focus was. Do you feel like uh, this was achieved? Or did you think it was difficult 
to execute. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because sometimes as a coach, we might say a lot of points and then try to give too much information and it might be overloading the athlete. So it's good to get a sense of what their point of view was so that if there's any discrepancies, they can be discussed and there could be more clarity on both sides and more understanding. And that can also help build rapport with each other too, especially if you're coaching and it's an athlete you haven't really had a time to develop um, an understanding of each other, what the style is, what preferences there are. So during that review time, it's, it's good relationship building and having um, a better dynamic between each other. So it could be more of a team effort. And that's also part of evaluating too. And these four steps you could really apply to, to the micro um, situations where it's just a training session for the day, or even on a more macro based on the annual plan or quarterly plan even, because once that's broken down, you can review each quarter after each tournament cycle, how things went and adjust accordingly for better performance later on. All right, so I do also wanna go over, this is an example of an annual plan. Um, it's not so detailed. I just wanted to give a brief overview on what it may look like. So again, an annual plan doesn't have to start in January. It can be just any 12 month cycle. And of course, we talk about adaptability. So things may change. You know, with the pandemic, things changed a lot for a lot of different athletes and how to adjust, how to adapt, how to change the plan so that it can, you, so the athlete can still perform at their best. In this example, there's two, there's two competitions. So it's not too strenuous, um, it's not too impacted. You know, a lot of times this may be uh, a beginning junior athlete possibly, or someone who's just breaking into the international stage and is not um, competing 10 tournaments throughout the year or more. So this is a sort of simple overview of what you might see in a annual plan with two competitions. So in the beginning here, this one happens to start in July. The competition, first competition is in December, two preparation phases. So the difference between the two preparation phases and one, there's more of a foundation of building strength and endurance. And then two, you're starting into more explosiveness and applying that strength that was built during the first preparation phase. And then in pre-competition, this is pretty um, soon before the competition. So there's not gonna be a lot of strength building. It's more maintenance, injury prevention, and uh, more so fine tuning before the competition. So in, in every competition, there's gonna be a recovery phase afterwards too. So after the competition and the recovery phase, this competition happens to be in December. So it's also important to incorporate some time uh, that the athlete can have with their family. Maybe it's time for holidays, celebrating the new year, and then going back into preparation one soon after. So first preparation phase, followed by second preparation phase, and then pre-competition. This is like mid-April for that competition in May. So again, so it's a simple overview. There's also, it's also broken down into quarters, quarter one, two, three, four. Um, and throughout this whole uh, annual plan. There's multiple discussions on reviewing what to work on each phase. While there's a general idea of what each phase works on, you can still break it down even more so by weekly plans, daily plans. But this is helpful in terms of giving an overview of what the goal is for the upcoming year. Okay, so um, in application, in going forward and really trying to utilize these tools with some athletes back home, it was very uh, valuable to really discuss with the athletes and their parents on what the goals are. Again, this helps create just a good foundation 
so that everyone is on the same page on what you want to work on for the next month or next quarter and why. And after that discussion happens, then you can create a plan of action, like the annual plan that I just showed, or just even a plan of action for the next few sessions. Again, it's very important that all parties can agree upon this so that there's not a lot of um, confusion. And along the way, meeting with the athlete, you know, where he or she is at and adjust accordingly. So what does that mean? A lot of times we're with athletes who have, there's various skill levels, especially in the beginner stage. Someone might not be able to make good contact with the bird. Someone may just need to work on footwork or focus on footwork. So where each athlete is and then meeting their need in that moment in order for them to grow. So not um, giving them something that's too easy not giving something that's too hard. And it's a certain balance of being able to encourage that athlete, um, but encourage them to grow and not stay too comfortable. It's really important to revisit the annual plan. You know, even though it's set for 12 months, that doesn't mean it can't change throughout that year. Um, so it's very important to go back and really see, okay, are we on track? Are we, are we still on the course for this tournament or the next tournament? Um, how are things? going currently and if anything needs to be adjusted then to do so and i do want to emphasize that constant cycle of evaluating planning delivering and reviewing so you're evaluating the plan and then you're still planning they kind of go hand in it's a very fluid model evaluate plan deliver and review and um, after the delivery it's really important to review soon after and and, and then go back into evaluating what is the, the next step. So these are some items that I was able to apply uh, to just a couple athletes that I'm coaching. And I found that it was actually very beneficial and the parents also really appreciated um, having an open discussion on, on what their interests are. Yeah. All right, so in closing, this fast track course from BWF and with Babins and Pan Am was very valuable for levels one and two. I really appreciated how detailed the manuals were. Um, if there were any questions, I could always just flip back and review that material, um, especially when breaking down movements into their specific components. Because again, as, as elite athletes, once you get to a certain point, it's not. It's second nature. It's intuitive how to hit and what how to move on the court. Um, so to be able to really have us think, okay, but what is this athlete struggling with? And maybe they're not there yet. So how to adjust to them and give them that detailed information that they may need in order uh, to excel. Uh, I really appreciated the instructors and the tutors. Um, our time from Denmark and Christina uh, and Jose from Peru and Chema. So everyone was very accommodating, very helpful, and they were always available to answer any questions that we may have and just give their insight into what they experience when they apply the material from these courses. Um, and I also appreciated that all the tools that we were given, there was an immediate application uh, for uh, players back home that we were coaching. And overall, this group, um, I think the dynamic was really good and that we were able to have uh, small group discussions and then being able to see each other coach and um, encourage each other on what went well and what can be improved on and then grow from there. So I really appreciated this course um, it was a good, it was well thought out, well executed. And yeah, I'm just thankful for that. I was able to have this time uh, together with this group of individuals. So thank you for listening. And I appreciate your time. Very good. Thank you very much, Jamie. And now we are going to move on to our Q&A section. 
Please, if you have any questions or comments that you want to share with us, please write them down in the chat box. I'm going to invite Rodolfo so he can uh, turn on his mic and join us in this Q&A. Good, Rodolfo. I have uh, several questions and some greetings actually from Guatemala as well. So I'm going to start with the questions. We have two questions here. In the relationship between athlete, athlete and coach, it's very important to reach some uh, a, a autonomy level from your athletes, from your point of view, how important it, it is for them to be autonomous and how would you work on that? Well, first of all, it depends on the stage they're in. I think that we have to give athletes some autonomy, but with certain limitations. I think that if, especially children, especially children, they need certain rules or guidelines. They need to follow certain rules. I think that if you, if they don't have those guidelines, with those uh, rules, I think at the end of the day, they will end up doing whatever they want, right? So I think that, yes, they do need to be autonomous to improve uh, their creativity so they can make decisions by themselves to know what they uh, need to do. But there are certain limitations, so they don't cross the line. So they don't do whatever they feel like it, because if not, then the group will be all over the place and you would have problems with the group. So I think that rules are necessary, but we are not in, uh, in an army. So I think that there should be rules, but we should be also aware of them. I would like to congratulate you both because now you are part of our coaching team from the uh, from Panam coaches. So I'd like to encourage you to uh, keep learning. Now, this fast track course lasted approximately one week. Did you find this course too short? Or uh, maybe some of the coaches or actually uh, candidates felt that they could have gotten more from each one of these levels if they had taken the courses separately. In my personal opinion, I think that after having discussed this with Chema and the people who know him, I think that athletes For people who know about badminton and who have been athletes, I think that at the end of the day, it's enough time to uh, take this fast track course. I think that pe if, if, for people who don't have much knowledge of badminton, it would be, yes, very, very short period of time. As I mentioned in my presentation, it's a lot of information in a very short period of time. I think that there are a lot of topics I mean, a lot of content from level one that at the end of the day, we already knew it because we have uh, been in this sport for so many years. So I think that, yes, yeah, so we skipped those steps a little bit because at the end of the day, we took advantage uh, of this uh, fast track course. I think that for people who don't know much about this sport, then yes, it would be a very short period of time. But for people such as athletes who want to transition from uh, athletes to coaches, I think that the time is okay. It's really good. Perfect. One last question before we finish, Rodolfo. All coaches usually look for, look to know when we're working well, when we're doing things wrong, and many times we just focus on winning. Do you think this is the only thing that we should have in mind or to help our athletes improve based on your experience in the course. In my personal opinion, I think that medals are not the most important thing. Of course, if you work well, you'll have you'll get results after that whole process, but I think that 
Now, as I see things, I think that my main role, my main job is to bring out the best of each athlete. In terms of technical, physical, tactical, and psychological aspects, to make it this person his or her best version, not just in in the, the sport, but in general in life uh, with values, because I think that people who are, who play badminton are, play or do it for a period of time, but at the end of the day, the values that you learn through this sport and through sport in general, I think that uh, that uh, stays with you throughout your life, and I think it's the biggest satisfaction, right, to know that at the end people and athletes are a little bit better uh, in comparison to when they started. So that they, now they are more persevering, they work hard, they, uh, I think that they become better after. Perfect, thank you very much. Well, now it's the end. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time. We had some other questions there, but well, I would like to thank you and Jamie for sharing such an interesting talk. As always, it's very enriching to discuss uh, with uh, emblematic coaches uh, about interesting topics in uh, current badminton. To our badminton family, we invite you to our next webinar entitled Understanding the Game of Badminton. What does science show us? This webinar will be streamed next Tuesday, March 29th at 3 p.m. Lima time, when we will have the pleasure to listen to Dr. Joao Cren from Brazil. Right now, we are sharing the link so you can register. We are sharing it in the chat box. We also encourage you to write to us and propose topics you are interested in uh, through the chat box as well. We would like to invite you to check out the Badminton Panam's YouTube channel where you will be able to see this and other conferences we have held in the past. Before we finish today's webinar, we would like to greet our audience who have joined us from different countries around the world, especially Jorge from Mexico, Juan from Guatemala, Chelsea from Costa Rica, Victoria from Honduras, Raul from Peru, Armando from Chile, Nancy from Bolivia, Marcus from Brazil, Giovanni from Colombia, and Albert from Jamaica. Thank you very much. On behalf of Badminton Panam, we thank you for your uh, participation and we hope you like this, se this session. Greetings everyone, take care and see you soon.